For question one, in the delay coordinate embedding process, the time delay parameter tau dictates how many teeth are in the data comb. This is false. The time delay parameter dictates how far apart the teeth are in the data comb. The embedding dimension is how many teeth are in the data comb. For question two, in the delay coordinate embedding process, the embedding dimension parameter m dictates how many coordinates are present in each delay vector, and this is true. Remember, the embedding dimension m dictates how many teeth are in the data comb, and there's one element in the delay vector, or one coordinate in the delay vector, for every tooth on the data comb. So this question is true. Question three states that all projections of a dynamical system can be undone perfectly with delay coordinate embedding, and this is false. While delay coordinate embedding does undo some types of projections, in particular, projections caused by taking a scalar measurement of a dynamical system using a smooth generic observation function at regular time intervals. This is one particular projection, not all projections. Even just getting at this one class of projections, we can break this statement. For example, consider an observation function which is only continuous. Or even worse, consider an observation function which is discontinuous. This would be an effective projection of this dynamical system for which delay coordinate embedding should not be able to undo the projection perfectly. It is very important to keep in mind that while delay coordinate embedding is very powerful and it can perfectly undo a specific kind of projection, there are very rigorous mathematical requirements on what kind of projection was performed, and it most definitely does not do all projections of a dynamical system. Question 4 states that the condition of the Takin's delay coordinate embedding theorem require that the observation function h that produces the time series data be a continuous function in that state space. And this is false. While it is certainly true that the function must be continuous, for delay coordinate embedding to work, the observation function h it must also be both differentiable and generic. That is, the observation function h must be a smooth generic function on the state space, not just continuous. Question 5 states that since tau greater than 0 satisfies the theoretical requirements of the Tawkins theorem, any choice of tau will result in an embedded attractor that looks the same as the original dynamics. And this is also false. Even if you choose a tau greater than 0 and you satisfy all other requirements of the Tawkins theorem, this does not guarantee that the embedded attractor will look anything like the original dynamics. We are only guaranteed that they'll be topologically equivalent. However, they may look geometrically very different. Because they can look geometrically very different, they'll look very different to us visually. For example, consider these two Lorenz attractors. They look very different geometrically, however topologically, they should be equivalent. Question 6 states that in practice, any tau greater than 0 is as good as the next. That is, any tau greater than 0 will provide a correct, equally complicated, and equivalently useful embedding. And this is false. In theory, this statement is true. Any tau greater than 0 is as good as the next. However, in practice, to do noise and finite data lengths, the choice of tau becomes critical in not only the usefulness of the embedding, but whether or not the embedding is overcomplicated. For example, whether or not it's folded in on itself. And if tau is chosen too large with finite data length, you can actually get embeddings which are incorrect. So while in theory, any tau greater than zero is good as the next, in practice, this is a very different story, and tau must be chosen very carefully.